Hey guys, Brandon Renner Productions here, and welcome to my third Git tutorial. This is actually the last Git tutorial I'm going to record today, since my first, second, and now the third Git tutorial were all actually recorded one after another. Anyway, in the last two tutorials, we went over how to set up a Git repository, how to use Git, uh, how to revert changes that you made, and then how to reset your working history. In this tutorial, I wanted to look over how to manage multiple files in your Git repository. In the past, we were only looking at one file, importantnote.txt. Now I'm going to talk about how to manage multiple files, which is extremely useful if you're coding. So now I'm going to actually start talking about coding. So I'm actually going to go ahead and make a new directory here, git1. And then if we could look into git1, we can see that it is an empty directory. Now inside of this git1, I'm going to actually start a small Java project. And this small Java project will be managed with git version control. So this is a good way to actually look at how one would actually use version control to um, manage the things that they want to keep track of. So the first thing I'm going to do is initialize a Git repository here because I know that I have the intention of managing various files with version control. Now the second thing I want to do is I'm actually going to add a readme to this file and this readme is actually going to be in markdown format. So readmes are a very common thing in Git repositories and readmes actually allow the user. So let's say I picked up a Git repository. It will allow the person who picked it up to see what the project is all about. So they're fairly important. So I'm going to go ahead and call this project printer, right? And since I'm writing it in markdown format, I can use the header format as such. And this printer project, a small project, written in Java that allows the user to print various things to the screen, right? This printer project is not complicated whatsoever. Um, all we're going to basically do is pick up the command line arguments that the user sends in and prints them. Uh, a loud jet is flying by right now. My apologies if you can hear it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this readme, and then I'm going to go ahead and add what's usually referred to as an initial commit. So if we type in git status, you can see that uh, there's a file readme here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add readme to the git repository, and then I'm gonna go ahead and commit it with the, the message initial commit. And then if we type in git log, you can see that there's only one commit, initial commit. And this only has the file readme in it which is perfect because the readme now states the project's intention. So now we're going to go ahead and create a new Java file, printer.java. And this tutorial series is not on Java, so if you don't know Java, go ahead and just ignore this little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and say public class printer, and then public static void main. And then here, all we're going to do is say for string arguments in args. Actually, we're going to use traditional for syntax. Right, so all this program does is print the things provided via the command line argument. So as you can see, we have this file here called printer.java. And if we use git status, as we just did, printer.java is not being watched by the git repository. So in addition to the readme, we also want our git repository to watch the printer.java file because it's important for this project. So we can go ahead and say git add printer.java. And then we're going to go ahead and commit the message or commit this version and say first version of printer program. Right. So now if we type in git log, you can see that we have two commits, uh, the initial commit and the first version of the printer program. And right. And then if we type git status, you can see that nothing has changed and nothing's going wrong. Everything is good. We have no outstanding files that we need to take care of. Great. So now in our Git repository, we have a readme file, which talks about what the project is. And then we have a printer.java file. 
Now let's go ahead and use our printer.java file. So the first thing we need to do is compile it so we can use the Java C command. We're just going to provide it printer.java. So it's now successfully compiled. However, there's an issue now. If we type in git status, you can see that we now have a file printer.class, which is new, and the repository is wondering what should it do with this file. Now, this is all well and good. It is indeed a, a file that the git repository could indeed watch. However, as a user, we don't want git to actually watch this file or manage its versioning. All that's important to us is the source code to this program. If the compiled version of the code changes, that doesn't matter because the user is the one that compiled it and they compiled it from the source code, right? All changes from all changes that occur in printer.class originate from changes in printer.java. In short, we don't want our git repository to watch this .class file because there's no need. So, we basically want to tell our git repository to ignore it. Now, there's two ways to ignore it. The first way is simply ignore it, right? This dot class file will never be committed. We are never going to git add printer.class and we're never going to git commit with printer.class. So on some level, we can just ignore the file. However, there's a way to also tell git to ignore this file. And that's by providing another file called a git ignore file. So if we actually open the file called dot git ignore, and then on each line, we simply list the file that we want to ignore. So we want to ignore this file called printer.class, right? And so we can do so. And then we just save this dot get ignore file. And if we type git status, you can see that printer.class is no longer listed because it is ignored. However, there's this new file called dot get ignore. Now the question remains, do we want to monitor any changes made to the dot get ignore file? And the answer to that is yes, of course. If we make any changes to the dot get ignore file, we want them to be changed along with the files that are added or removed to the directory, right? So if we start coding in C, for instance, and then we want git ignore to ignore the compiled version of the C code, we would want this new git ignore to also be committed with our changes. So we can go ahead and now add this dot get ignore to the working uh, history and or to the staging area rather. And then we can commit it by saying added a git ignore to ignore compiled Java files. And now if we type git log, you can see that the only thing we've done is we've created an initial commit, we've added the printer.java, and then we've added a git ignore to ignore the compiled version of the printer.java. However, there's another complication with this. Say we have one more Java file, and then we compile that, and then it creates its own class file, right? What if we have hundred Java files and then we compile them and they all create their own class files. We don't want to tell the git ignore file to ignore every single one of those individually. That's ludicrous. Nobody wants to do that much work. So we can use wildcards in the git ignore file to manage this. Basically, instead of actually explicitly saying a file name, we can use an asterisk, which means match anything, right? So any dot class file we want git to ignore. And if we type git status, you can see that it is indeed still ignoring the printer.class file. So now any Java file that we make and then compile, git will not attempt to watch. So we can go ahead and add this dot git ignore file to the staging area. And then if we type git status, we can see that it's ready to commit. And then we're gonna go ahead and commit this dot git ignore file. And we're gonna say uh, allow or ignore all Java file, compiled files, right? So now our Git directory is ignoring all compiled Java files. So that is basically how to manage multiple files in your Git directory, uh, nothing too fancy. And uh, now we also know how to ignore particular files. Uh, there's not much really to this. If we added another source file, for instance, another .java file, we would need to add it to our Git repository. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and make a new uh, printer object or a new, hmm, a new 
geez, how can I complicate this printer program? A new console printer dot Java. And this console printer is just going to be a class called the console printer. And when you initialize this class, you're going to give it a string s. And then it's going to keep track of what needs to be printed. Right, so it has a private string uh, print contents. And then when you initialize it, the list.print contents is going to be s. And then it also has this method called print to console. And that simply says system.out.println list.print contents. Oh boy. Right, so now we've got a class that prints something to the screen. And then we can go ahead and um, we can see get status. And we can go ahead and add this console printer to the uh, working history and then commit it along. However, there's a certain ideology with the git master branch that we're currently in. And that is that at every commit, uh, things should work. Now, if we went ahead and added this console printer uh, class, we would notice that uh, it's pretty much an empty commit, right? Nothing relies on this class. We're just adding it to the working tree. So we want to make the next commit as functional as possible. So we're going to go ahead and actually change our printer.java uh, object here to use this new printer class. So I'm going to open up the console printer class here for reference. And then so for each argument we look at, we actually want to say console printer. Uh, we're just going to call it printer equals new console printer and then we're going to send in the argument and then we want to say printer dot print to console uh, don't ever do this this is terrible this does not follow this is terrible okay so now we can actually go ahead and add the console printer to our repository and then add the printer changes to our repository and then we can go ahead and commit them and say switched printer logic to fancy new object oriented logic. Right, so now if we type git log, you can see that uh, we have switched the printer logic to the fancy new object oriented logic. And then we can go ahead and compile all of our, actually we just wanna compile printer.java. And you can see that there was actually an error. Was this intentional? I'd say so. Now we can uh, actually see the how to well, you can just see more Git workflow. So you can see I actually left off the S in args, right? And what we should have done is before the previous commit, we should have actually uh, compiled it to ensure that the commit works. So we broke all ideology uh, that indicates that all commits in the master branch should be working. However, that's of no worry. We're going to go ahead and fix that right here. So we're going to add printer.java and then commit fixed a small typo in printer. Right, and now we can go ahead and compile printer.java. And then if we want run printer.java and we're going to run it with the command line, hello world. You can see that, uh, oh, I see. We cannot put the exclamation point there. Hello world. You can see that it does indeed print out hello world. So everything functions as it should. And this entire project now with its two files, its readme and its git ignore file are all being managed inside of our git repository. Now, if we were to actually go out of this directory, right? You would see that we can no longer access this git, git repository. We have to be inside of the directory to access all of its details. And then when we're inside of it, you can see all of the changes that we've made uh, along with cute little messages. And then we are now able to revert any of these changes. We're now able to view these changes. We're now able to see exactly what we did. So we have a history of what we've actually done and worked on. And this is extremely useful. Uh, if, even if you're only working by yourself, it's extremely useful to keep a track record of what you've done. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, we covered the git ignore file and managing multiple code files within our git repository instead of just a text file in the next tutorial we're actually going to talk about a rather advanced topic uh, branching 
And then we're going to go ahead and cover how to branch and then merge. So thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Peace out, guys.